Welcome to the Isle of News. Okay, and the first bit of news today is about myself. I promise I will never disappear for four days without saying anything ever again. I had so many messages, it was kind of ridiculous. And a bunch of different discords, my own discord, PMs, Twitter, and everything. Uh, I apologize. I, I felt pretty bad, so I decided to take a short hiatus for a few days and I decided not to message anyone or basically turn on my discord or anything and uh, I got a lot of PMs and I apologize that will never happen again I will never take a break ever again also another person that's been taking a short hiatus is Dondi he went to the JP25 event celebrating 25 years of Jurassic Park now they got to see the first five minutes of Fallen Kingdom which is amazing and he was gone for a few days in LA so I don't know what else he did there but it sounds like a good time now in the first bit of news here I want to talk about it's kind of uh, speculation but we do know nesting is coming soon we saw the galley animations we also learned about the genealogy and all that kind of stuff so I'm guessing what they're gonna be coming out with next is probably nesting I'd say the next big death branch patch is going to be all about that I've speculated some information here I don't know if this is true or not but it kind of makes sense besides everything that we do know about nesting is there's probably going to be different sizes of nests because if you look at the galley animation that I showed last time and I'm probably showing right now that it's based on its size so I'm guessing different creatures are all gonna have different animations different effects and nesting is gonna look different for all of them maybe even the way they dig the nest and all that kind of stuff the way they actually make the nest so the sizes of the nests and the way they look are probably gonna be different as well so whenever they first come out with nesting galley might be first we don't really know but the different creatures that come are gonna have different size nests and are gonna look different probably they might all look the same I don't know but they'll definitely most likely be different sizes I hope anyways it would only make sense now as for huge things like the puerta and stuff they probably won't be doing nesting for that considering the puerta is not supposed to be playable and is getting replaced by the Bracky here soon and then the Bronto is gonna be added but yeah any sort of giant creatures like that we probably won't see nests for anything that's mainly going to be in survival are the creatures we're gonna see nesting effects genealogy all that kind of stuff in the game now I hope they take this a step further so eventually once they get the basic sort of nesting system in place it actually becomes more complicated you can't just make a nest for no reason you have to maybe have certain requirements or maybe get certain items or something together eventually in the future to make your nest and I hope every nest actually looks different and has sort of a different purpose based on the sort of creature you are let's just say for example that you're a Quetz you know what I mean and you would have to make a nest on like a cliff side or something it would have to be made out of branches or whatever maybe I mean maybe that's more typically bird or whatever but you, you kind of get the idea and point I'm going with it that each nest is going to look different they'll have different requirements and they'll all be unique and also really cool now this might be a step further than what I'm thinking right now base initial I guess nesting is probably just going to be different sizes maybe they'll have different requirements I don't really know but yeah it's it's going to be really awesome now in next bit of Isle News, this one's a little bit more normal as a lot of you guys probably already know about this. It's been a few days and by a few days I mean like five days. <laughs> I meant to cover this earlier but like I said before I was gone. Basically the Corno got nerfed. Now we've known about it losing its ambush for a way over a month now. I've been talking about it in my videos for a while. In the Mega Patch it got its ambush removed which we knew about and it also had a wide turn radius. So it can't actually just turn on a dime while it's sprinting anymore. Now the Carno is the fastest creature in the game, excluding some creatures that aren't in survival and also the Hypo Rex, which is currently not a playable right now. After the Mega Patch, what happened is they actually came out with more patch notes, making the turn radius even wider and slightly lowering the Carnotaurus bleed. Now the Carno bleed before was 25, now it's only 20, and I'm guessing the reason they're giving it a wide turn radius and lowering its bleed is in anticipation of its combat mechanic. We talked about it in the past, basically what the Carno is going to have is as it runs and bites, it's going to do more damage based on its momentum. So as it runs by and bites, it's going to be, I guess, sort of like a tearing sort of motion. You know what I mean? You're going to be doing a lot of damage. So the faster you're moving, the faster that's going to happen. Now, what I kind of hope they do, instead of having creatures or maybe even just the Carno, 
is they kind of have a slow momentum buildup. So basically you start out at, I don't know, 70% speed when you run. And then over the course of, I don't know, whatever, 30 seconds or something or 20 seconds or 10 seconds, you slowly build up to 100% speed. And the damage in between that, this is all speculation by the way, this is what I would like for them to do. As you build up to 100% speed, you do more and more damage. At 100% speed, you would obviously do the most damage based on its combat mechanic. So this is what I would like for them to do. I think it'd be really sick, have sort of a slow build up in speed. I think most creatures should probably have this. Instead of having an ambush and just sprint and trot, you'd have your sprint would just be kind of like, you start from a, the base speed and then you move up to maximum speed over the course of a few seconds, something like that. Also, another reason that why they widened the turn radius is so jukes will now work. And they're trying to, I guess, turn the game into a little bit more skill-based. If you watched uh, True Alpha or anyone play the Utah... Oh, we got him! Oh, we juked him! Oh my god, True Alpha! It... <laughs> He's so fucking god. Oh my god, that was the best play I have seen in... Oh my god, he did it a third time! You'll see him jump over Carnos and stuff like that. So I'm guessing you're going to see a little bit more running left and right and breaking ankles and jukes happen on the Carno a lot more often now. So definitely more skill-based gameplay, which is something that we need in the aisle. Now, Carno players aren't going to necessarily like this change, but, you know, it's okay. They'll bounce it all out eventually. Also in the patch notes, the Utah Raptor Juvies got some buffs and basically they made it faster. So the Juvies now have a little bit more of the zoomies as they say in the patch notes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the Utah Raptor Juvenile got buffed, which is cool. Yeah, they're still balancing out the babies. We've been talking about the babies for a long time now. Fixed galley health discrepancies between hatchling, juvenile, and adult. For some reason, his health was resetting back down to the 20s when he was an adult. It was actually the worst. Also in the patch notes is there's a new feature to prevent people from crouching forever. Now, I actually do this on my Giga quite often. I kind of crouch around the whole entire map. And uh, their realistic approach is to keep you from getting cramps. I say that in quotation marks. And also, they've disabled stamina regeneration while crouched. You know, which kind of makes sense. You don't want people crouching around the entire map forever. You know, it kind of doesn't make much sense. Those poor little knee bones, man. They've also heavily increased herbivore food found in Isle V3, which is definitely a good change. I know a lot of people are complaining about this. Me included, I felt like I was in a constant state of 10% health going between food and water back when V3 was first introduced because I had to go such a, a long distance. They've also added alphabetical sorting to the, the character selection screen in the aisle for some reason. I guess people didn't like the random order. Uh, the order was actually from Dondi's favorite to least favorite. That's the order that it was. <laughs> Also, they've disabled Steam family sharing, which is good because a lot of people were actually abusing this. I'm sorry to the people that actually use this legit. And also, if you're dual boxing in the aisle, stop because you will be banned if they catch you. And the last little bit of sneaky stuff added in, which wasn't in the patch notes, is they changed corpse behavior and I guess corpse physics a little bit to where you don't actually have to re-log to eat the corpse. It should actually play a little bit better now and you should be able to see the corpse and eat it where it lands. Everyone should be more, I guess, in sync with that now. And it doesn't fly off into fucking space anymore, which is always a good change. I don't know exactly what they changed with the physics and or weight system for the corpses, but it looks a lot more realistic now. So definitely a good change. And that's basically all I got for you today, guys. Now, the last little bit we're going to talk about is some theory stuff. Now, during the last video, I actually mentioned Code Hades, and it was mentioned before in the lore. Now, I was playing Conan with Dondi, and he said he watched my video before my last video based on Code Hades. But basically, the last two videos, I talked about Code Hades and what it can mean. The last one, I stated in a better, more concise way of what I felt like it was going to be. But he only mentioned, he told me my idea for Code Hades was completely 100% wrong. But I talked to him during stream, we were streaming Conan, and he didn't say anything about the hypos moving to Tartarus or any of my other ideas. So I'm guessing those are mostly correct or at least close enough that he didn't mention it. Now my thoughts on this are we don't know exactly what Code Hades is, but I don't think it really matters. 
because we do know Code Hades is a signal for either the Hypo Utah or the Hypos in general being released. It could be like a protocol is like a warning sign or something. You know, maybe someone accidentally released them or did it in a like nefarious way. And that's just what Code Hades is. It doesn't necessarily have to mean anything. It should, it could just be the simple act of them being released. Honestly, though, it could be anything as for Code Hades. But what I think is correct so far is like I said, Hypo's moving to Tartarus, Tartarus being on AE001, and then them being released from Tartarus whenever the map actually comes out. I think that's correct, we just don't know exactly what Code Hades in particular means. And I think Code Hades has to be the reason behind why they are released. So, sorry if that doesn't make much sense, but that's all I got so far. Now, this is based on memory that's like five days old at this point. So I did have a few other details to go into. I remember when he first stated it and when I was going to record this video, but since then it's kind of been lost to me. So either you can go back and watch it, which I don't even know the timestamp, or I can go back and watch it and maybe talk about it more. But I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna wait until some more information actually pops up before we mention it again. But if you guys have any ideas or thoughts, like you always do, a lot of you guys had some really cool ideas and I basically came up with this theory based on what people said in theory, aisle theories, and also what you guys said in the comment section below. But anyways, guys, that's all I got for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to smash that like button. I love your faces, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Also, I promise it won't be four days this time. <laughs>